friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, cry, and hug, friendship solid as gold. My soul could whatever started a year ago. We share our stories and your stories were told. 80s, 90s, memories that give us glee. And on the block, party shows and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom. And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Okay, so we decided and then decided <clears throat> against it to go to Chicago. And then we were like, no. We just talked ourselves right we out talked, of it. We talked ourselves into it and then we talked ourselves out of it. Because here's the thing. Like, it's NKOTP season. This is the block party. Yep. And it's NKOTP season. Like, we have a, over a month to wait until we see we our really men. We really do have over a month. To see those five beautiful brothers from the Beantown land. I, I said it right wait. this time. I can't wait. Ugh. They're going to be wait. right there. They're going to be right there. I mean, like. And I'm living through all of you guys. You know, I, I haven't seen a whole lot, though. No, I haven't either. Oh, did you see, see that TikTok I sent you? Yes, I did. It was really <laughs> weird. Sadie loved it. Um. <laughs> So I signed us up for a TikTok account. I saw that. So well, should we intro? Yeah, let's intro. Okay. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. And this is the block party. Welcome to the block party. We aren't leaving out anybody tonight. Nope. 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 No Sir Ree Bob. We're not. No Sir Ree Bob Baloo. Nope. Uh, so welcome if this is your first time listening to us yeah we're very happy to have you we are very happy to have you thank you so much for listening to us um this is our block party episode yeah where we talk about all things new kids on the block that's correct the other episodes that we do are 80s and 90s related yeah, yeah. so that's that's the gist it is <laughs> <laughs> but like we said, this is the block party, so we're going to talk about all the new kids on the block things. And share some stories. Yeah. And some texts. Yes. So stay tuned for that at the end. We have we have quite the uh, abundance of text messages because I forgot about the text messages. <laughs> I know, guys. I know. I'm but bad. But keep sending them. Yes, please keep sending them. Like, nobody else has called us after their show. We want you to call after. We want to hear the excitement in your voice after the show. So let's, let's remind them of the phone number. Okay. It it's is. 857 271 1047. We so, finally have memorized our number. It took, I didn't, remember, I, it only yeah. took over a year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. And I have also, everybody got their swag. Yeah. So I sent the Patreon swag. Thank you for being Patreon peeps. Thank we you appreciate so much. you. We appreciate you very much. Um, And I'm about to send some more swag because yeah, I'm going to get the summer done. Yeah. Because tour season's upon me. And you'll be gone for like three I'm weeks. I'm going to be gone for, well, including like our trip. It's going to be three weeks. Yeah. So I think time. that, I think maybe we'll record like that weekend. Like when we're in Boston, maybe like here and there. Cause people like that when we've done it before. So, okay. I was actually thinking about this the other day. Okay. We Let's can't break put it pressure down. on ourselves to record. No, we can't because it doesn't, when we that do, doesn't it work. doesn't happen. Right. That doesn't work. Right. So we'll just see what happens. Yeah. So hey. I'm excited to hang out. I'm so excited just to chill. Because the thing is, like, after, I mean, the concert doesn't get out that late. Right. And so we have all night to hang out afterwards. I'd like to go to a club. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that's that. Is that the plan? I think the plan, like, let's, like, go out. We're going to go out. I'm excited. We're going out tomorrow night. We are going out tomorrow night. Yeah. The Eagles. Yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're going to the local Eagles club and we're going to see this band called Dakota. I was supposed to go last weekend to see Dakota, but I had had a day like just we had somebody try to break into our car and while we were still in it, it was just a whole mess. <laughs> and and there were other things that were going on. And I just had to say, you know what? Right. I just can't go today because I am not in the right frame of mind. 
but I am game for the next week. So, so we ended up going we last week. Yeah. Well, we being me and our other friends. But you never went to go see them. We didn't go see Dakota. Yeah. We went to the restaurant place where we had some drinks and some nachos. Hey. And we were like, you know what? Let's just stay here. So we went downstairs where Nikki and I hung out with Joy Fatone. That's right. And it was it was interesting. I would have gotten right up there and sang. <laughs> I know you would have. I would have sang, Return of the Mac. That's what I would have sang if they had it. <laughs> or I know I, you would have, for sure. Or I would have sang, This is how we do it. Sha na 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 na. Somebody sang that. I know. You sent it to me. Oh, that's right. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have some of my Angry Orchard Fireballs? No. No, thank you, ma'am. Is that on the menu tomorrow? Because I think it might be. For you, maybe. <laughs> Not for I. <laughs> We're hitting seasons first. And we've got yes. we've got a driving service. So. Yes. Because I want more of those nachos. <sighs> I'm going to have to go off keto for this. Yikes. Only a day, though. Yeah. It's only a day. Right. I'm not going to beat it's myself only, up about and it. Here's the thing. Like, we're going to share some nachos. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, have some drinks. And that's it. I might bring some Pepto with me. Good idea. <laughs> good good call. Yeah. We don't <laughs> so, want any accidents. We're also seeing a shot of poison. Yeah. Which is the poison cover band. So I'm interested to see. I wonder, have what, you seen C- a picture I wonder of what CC looks like. I was trying to figure out which one was CC. I was too, and I couldn't I knew it which out. one Brett Michaels was. Uh, me too. I picked him out straight away. It was st- <laughs> yeah, straight away. Straight away. He I looks was pretty like, legit. That right there, he's Brett Michaels of the band. Shot of Poisoned. Shot of Poisoned. <laughs> Shot of Poison. <laughs> so. You know what I'm going to do. I, I, I'm going to need to borrow somebody's lighter for. We both lie silently stealing the date of the night. I think people hold up their phones now. Oh. You'll have that. Yeah. You, but, like like this. Oh, with their light on? Yeah, like that. Oh. It's too bad it couldn't flicker. It's like really a small in there, though. Well, I actually think that they have an app. Oh, really? That will do that. Oh. I think they do. Wow. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can really dance. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah. Welcome to the block party. I feel like we've talked about so much already. I know. I just, I'm so excited about this tour. Like, I'm so excited about it. Um, we'll get into it a little bit more, but because um, I believe we're going to have her, try to have her come on an episode. But yeah. Jenny, yeah. Cover Girl, OG, cover OG girl. was on stage last night with her daughter. And it was so cute. Oh, my it gosh. It really was. I did my best to stay awake. Didn't happen. I totally did. And I called Brooke three times. I fell asleep on the couch and I woke up at 2 a.m. And then I watched Did you it. see my Brooke? 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 I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> there were like four of them. I was trying to get your attention because she was <clears throat> going on like right away. I was like, yeah, she's out. I was out cold. Yep. Until I heard my cat chasing a mouse. And oh, then I woke gosh. up. And then as I'm watching this cat play with the mouse... I can't move because like there's a mouse, and then I'm right. watching the videos. Yeah, and or the live. Who did the live? Was it Dawn? Jill? Dawn. Yeah. So Jill I started her it. Live. Jill started it, but she had a real poor connection. I yes, and people so were saying she that was, they, was trying, and she was like in the perfect spot where Jenny was, but yes, she, she was really having trouble connecting. But Dawn was able to do it, and I posted it on our Facebook, and I posted it on Twitter, and I posted it on Instagram. So if you want to go see it, you can go see it on any of those, any of our. Social media platforms. Yes. So it's Indeed. really awesome. Yes. And I, it would be cool to have It just her was so cute the way it came it. out. Yeah. It was cool. It really was. Her daughter's so precious. Oh my gosh. She looks just like her. Yes, she does. It's adorable. Adorable. Yes. I mean, can we just say how beautiful yes. they are? Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm like, Jenny, what are you doing? Well, Jill is what I am. You're. <laughs> What? Well, Jell? Yeah, that's from The Only Way is Essex. Oh, Toby. I don't watch that. I used to watch it a long time ago. I remember. <laughs> but, oh my gosh. Beautiful, beautiful girls. They're... Yes. Yes. Anyway, so I tonight, loved it. So tonight, our friends are in... San Diego. San Diego, California. Yep, I can't... Oh my gosh, what a night. What I a hope night. that I they're there. 
Yeah, because it's, well, it's 418 there. Right. But I know that they had a drive. Right. Because Mandy was saying usually it doesn't take that long, but it was like going to take them almost four hours to get there. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Yuck. Well, it's like us driving to Boston. Uh Uh-huh. Only for her, there's more traffic. Right. For us, not so I mean, there is traffic, but not until you hit Boston. There is when you get to that big dig area. You know what I'm talking about. In Sync 5? Oh, God. Oh, hi, cute guy that works at the mall. Yeah. So I don't think we've ever told that story. I think we have. Oh, okay. I won't tell it again. But yeah, that was that was interesting. You were like, say Matt. Matt! What are the chances? It was so crazy. What are the chances? It's like, you like my car? <laughs> I had a hat on. You did. And I was like this. And he Brooke was, was embarrassed like, about my doing? car. Well, I wasn't until I saw. That's true. And he was like grown. People were beeping at us and flipping us off. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> them <laughs> you guys back yeah we were living our best life we really were we were like 20 right my like, friend umberto worked really hard on that fire symbol he did a great job <laughs> too he painted that it was like painted on it looked amazing he did a great job yeah he did so i know if he was still up here like and i wanted help with like a t-shirt or something he would design something beautiful he, he would where is he now i think he's in texas now oh yeah he has a family nice yeah he was he was a nice guy umberto good egg i loved him he was a very good egg he would always teach me things in spanish that weren't so nice that what (laughs) he would teach me how to say things in spanish that weren't so nice oh (laughs) well that's that's okay bad words so should we read stories yeah let's do it okay Alrighty. That was a weird noise. I need a new pop socket. Here's Aww. the thing. So I think I'm gonna get the same one. Oh, what okay. do you think? I mean if you if you're happy with it. I love this pop socket with all my heart. Then get the same one. But like I need the case is starting to break. Oh and yeah. like I need I don't trust putting because it says you can do three applications. Yeah. I don't really trust that. And I like dangle my phone like this. Right. All the time. So I don't like pop sockets. I had one once and I was like, nope, can't, don't like it. I love it when I'm walking because like I put it in in my hand and I can still like walk and then I can like look at my phone. Because if I hold it like this, it flies out of my hand. Oh, really? Yes. I don't, I don't, I don't lose my I can't tell you how many times it's flown out of my hand. (laughs) Like just with nothing. It's just, I don't know if it's like, it's probably my sweaty palms. Sweaty palms. Maybe, you know, well, I mean, so here's the thing. I do want to preface this by saying that we have you guys have sent us some stories and we haven't read all of them, but we will get to them. So we just want to remind you of that, that we will totally get to the stories. Absolutely. Um, We really appreciate you sending them. Um, We just... You know, we can't read them all at once. Right. Exactly. And we so. appreciate it. And keep them coming. Like, we want to hear your stories from the concert. Yes. And, you know, any like sightings that you may have or something that happened in the past. Right. Or 80s and 90s stories. Yes. Send them to my so-called whatever at gmail.com. Please do. Always. Yes. And we will get to them. We will. But we can't do this podcast without your stories. That is correct. And we love you. We love you. So, who wants to go first? I can go first. Because I think you've gone first. Okay. I can go first. Okay, I'm going to read Becky's Waitress Experience. Here we go. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa, whoa! Oh, I love them too. I got to talk to Joey Fatone again. I love them so much. I was very excited about that. I know you were. (laughs) I was like, oh my gosh, he responded! (laughs) Okay, um, Becky's Waitress Experience. I posted the full review on my blog, but here is the shortened, much more Joe McIntyre-centered version. I like that kind of version. I am ready for that. I went to New York City to see Waitress this past weekend, which not this past weekend, but you guys get the drift. Like it was when (laughs) she sent it. (laughs) It was my first time in New York and my first Broadway show and my first time seeing Joe McIntyre this close. Whoa. I typically have nosebleed seats for the concerts. 
We may or may not have gotten in line for selfies and autographs on Thursday night, even though we didn't have tickets to the show that night. Hey, you know what? YOLO! Living your best life. (laughs) That's right. When he walked out the stage door after the show, the whole crowd screamed, myself included. The butterflies in my stomach were more like pterodactyls doing somersaults (laughs) than butterflies. I totally know how you're feeling. The anticipation was intense. We were in the middle of the line right up against the barricade and I could only watch in awe as he made his way down the line. I had my camera in selfie mode and I had my shirt that I planned to wear to the concert ready for him to sign. When he got to me, I handed him the shirt and I said, you have to read the shirt. He replied, I have to read the shirt. I said, yes, please. So he read the shirt and then he paused for a second and he said, wait, you had a heart attack? I smiled and I said, yes, right after I had a baby. He smiled and said, I would have had a heart attack too if I had a baby. (laughs) Then he smiled, signed the shirt, and we took a selfie together and I handed him a bag. Wait, did she really have a heart attack? I think she did. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, that got me, that caught me off guard. Um... Um, he smiled signed the shirt and we took a selfie together and I handed him a bag with a scarf I knitted oh that's so sweet yes I made him a scarf and I included a coffee gift card that's so sweet he likes those as I know because he posted on Instagram oh he did yeah he said I like these cards yeah he somebody oh. sent him one and he like that's nice yeah he likes them he, ha- he handed the bag to his handler, and then we quickly got out of the way to make room for other people. I don't know what he did with the scarf. He didn't wear it to the, 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 the he didn't wear it the next night, but that's okay. I'd rather not know than no. Wait, I'd rather not know than to find out he threw it away or something. True that. Agreed. We gave him <laughs> some shirts. Right. Right. Probably didn't make it home with him. There's pro. I mean, there's probably some like. Homeless person that has a couple of nice new t-shirts. Has a couple of nice, my so-called whatever t-shirts. Which is out in LA. But can I tell you something? Yeah. I think I'm going to put something together for him to give to him. Like what? Like, I'm going to give him Pepperidge Farm. You've got mail. Cookies. Because <laughs> that's what he talked about at, at his show. He kept talking about is where are the cookies. That? He kept, he said, you're from Maine. Where are the Pepperidge Farm cookies? Oh, the Joe show. Yes. I want to put something together for Jordan. Okay. We'll both do it. But I'm not going to give him cookies. What am I going to give him? I don't know what I'd like to give him. On Friday night, we went to the show. To say it was amazing does not do it justice. I've seen shows off Broadway when I lived in Arizona but this way was was by far the best experience ever. If you go, get the key lime pie. It's delicious. The whole cast was incredible. And to be there to watch Joe McIntyre do something I know he loves and is passionate about was inspiring. It was truly incredible to watch and I couldn't and I could not picture a better person for that role. He played it perfectly. The show made me laugh and cry and blush a lot. Afterwards, we beelined out of the theater to get in line for autographs and selfies again. This time we were at the front, so he had to come to us first. As soon as he stepped out of the door, the pterodactyls started again. He walked up and started signing autographs again. And at first he didn't see my playbill or the flyer I had him sign for my four-year-old Joey obsessed daughter. Then I said, hey, don't forget about us short people down here. And he grinned at me and I swear his smile could have melted ice on the coldest day. We took our second selfie and it was so much better than my first that it may or may not be my profile pic now and my home screen on my phone. (laughs) To say that I was giddy for the rest of the night would be a gross understatement. I have not stopped smiling. After he handed me my phone, after he handed my phone back to me, I said, you were amazing. See you in May. And then we scooted out of the way. It was an amazing, incredible, fantastic experience. And if he does another show on Broadway after the mixtape tour, you can bet I will show up. However, I wish I could. I, bloop, bloop, I wish I would have been brave enough to ask him about the scarf the second night. But like I said, I think I would rather not know. I cannot wait for Barstools in May. Sincerely, Becky. Yay. And Becky has pictures. She does. 
Becky, I can tell, okay, that second night, that second night picture is yes. amazing. Look at like the wind like blowing in her hair. It's like perfect. It is and amazing. And him, he's like, oh, I love it so much. I'm so sad I didn't get to see this. I know you are. I'm sad I didn't get to see it. I just, it just didn't work out. And there was a reason behind it. Right. So. Right. But. Such is life. Such is love. Can I tell you something that's kind of funny and a little bit off topic, but a little bit on topic? What's that? But it's concerning waitress. Okay. So I have clients going on a on a tour over in United Kingdom, over yeah. in the UK. And there's a city stop in London. Uh-huh. And they get to choose between two shows to see. Oh. One of them is nine to five and one of them is waitress. Oh, no way. So I'm talking to these people and they, they're my parents' age. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, I would choose because they didn't know what to choose and they were like, you know, kind of going back and forth. And I was like, if it were me, and, I, and I'm like, I think they both get like really good reviews, but I would see Waitress. Yes. And they were like, oh, have you heard, have, you know, have you had clients see them? And I'm like, I was like, okay, no. But Joy McIntyre was in it. And they looked at me like. Who's Joy McIntyre? Right. And he's not in this one. Right. He's not in London. What does that make any difference to them? It doesn't. But I was like, well, Joy McIntyre was in it. Yeah. And I had these two people that are my parents' age looking at me like, oh, well, that's great. Who's that? <laughs> Is that your friend? <laughs> <laughs> very close friend. Yes. 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 yes we are so anyway, close. that makes me laugh because now like I will always think of Joy McIntyre when it comes to Waitress. Yes. Even though Waitress like is has been on and will continue to go on. Right. But it'll always be like Joy McIntyre. Yes. I was trying to think of like what I would love to see him in. Like I'm not. Here's the thing. I have never been a musical person. Well, I shouldn't say that because one of my favorite movies growing up was The Wizard of Oz, and that's a musical. Right. And another one of my favorite movies was Hairspray. That's a musical. Right. So, obviously, I like musicals. I mean, but not not necessarily. There are just some musicals I'm like, whoa. Like what? I don't know. Maybe it's because of like the theater at school, us having to watch those musicals. Yeah. Those ones were like, oh my gosh, shoot me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I don't know. I like them. Maybe it's because I'm really actually jealous because I got cut from show choir in sixth grade. Maybe. That may be what, what it is. I was very sad that I got cut from show choir. I wanted to try out, but I never dared. Totally tried out. Totally got cut. I wouldn't have. I'm sure I wouldn't have made it anyway. But I was too nervous. I was always scared of stuff like that. But. Well, well I wasn't. And look what happened. I did play Poof the Ghost and Reach for the Magic. That is true. I was the understudy, so in I did not. In third grade. I had eight lines. I just sat there. Were you in the chorus? I was backup witch. Oh, so that was like the, the lead role. Yeah. So that was, but that was good. But I never got to do it. <laughs> well, no, because I, I was, I almost said her you name. You got mail. Yes. Yes. Because she showed up. Yeah. But that's really good though, that you were the understudy for the lead. I guess I didn't really put that two and two together back then. As a kid. I just thought I was like, not good. So. That's why they made you the understudy? Yeah. No, you had to be good because if the under, if the lead isn't there. Then why did it get cut from show choir? showtime showtime synergy can you read music nikki and i was like i can sing it <laughs> i feel it in my heart i do in my soul you want me to sing some brian adams i'll sing some brian adams <laughs> okay so so come on to come on over to the uh website my friends check out the pictures and check out becky's pictures because they, they are, are amazing wonderful so i am going to read erica's buffalo to NYC experience. The first time I read this, I read it as Erica's Buffalo Stance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's Erica's story. Hey. This is Erica's Buffalo to New York City experience. And this is about, I think she's compiled some events that took place when she was in New York City for the launch. The, like the Hangin' Tough 30 relaunch press tour Re Pre press right. day that, press yeah. day yes thank yes. you that's the word i was looking for my sister and i were only there from thursday to friday we flew in from buffalo here are some highlights from friday's signing it was quick like you blink and it was over 
It was a little more organized than most new kids events, but they still managed to get us to buy the second unnecessary CD because we were promised a double signing. <laughs> Even though we were skeptical of this from the get-go. Yep. And we heard that it didn't end up happening. Right. <laughs> Apparently, well, for some people, it did. Apparently, they ran out of the vinyl. We managed to get one each. It was pretty cool and looks amazing with the autograph. I bet it does. That's cool. I bet it does. The line, OMG. The line was the basic NKOTB line, but in 20 degree temps. Oof. We thought we packed enough clothes, but of course we never do. It made me appreciate the 90 degree line in Miami for the cruise last fall, as I vow to never complain about the heat of that line ever again. But it sure was hot. It was it was really friggin' toasty. Yeah. I was like melting. Oh, I melted. I was done. Because, I mean, if it gets over 75, if I'm in the outside sun... I'm melting. I want I want water nearby. Yeah. We're from Maine. Uh, if it gets over 50 for me, <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> all in all, it was a fun experience. We met up with a blockhead from our local area, and from there we met about 10 more and reconnected with others. We were right next to these guys in the line called Line Guys. Yes, these guys have a job where they get paid to wait in line for you in New York. They do all sorts of shows like SNL and Hamilton and stuff like the Today Show or whatever. So these guys get paid $45 for two hours and 20 each hour after that. Wow. That's great. I would do that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> then they charge more if it's under freezing. Whatever. Wow. So there had to be like 15 of these guys who wait in the line for you. And either you swap spots with them at some point. Or you meet up later with your wristband, CD, etc. Haha. <laughs> Being a blockhead means waiting in lines, and this changes it all. It had us all wondering what it was it worth $150 to wait from 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. in those temps. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Maybe. But $150 a piece. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I guess it depends. What we. I really wish I had the autographed. Vinyl, record. yeah. I have the vinyl, but, but I just autographed. Don't autographed, yeah. yeah. We were probably about number forty in line, mm -hmm. and some had been there since midnight. Wow! They didn't mess around either. They had tents and sleeping bags. <sighs> it was entertaining to say the least. We could use some of these line guys on the cruise. Ha ha! Here you stay here at Lido. <laughs> <laughs> we met up with sisters from Philly. I'm hoping they reach out to you because I've seen emotional first meetings. But these girls. They have attempted to meet the guys many times over the past 30 years. They have a very creative dad who helped them when they were younger, but no luck. They have stories about 30 years ago. I loved hearing them. They came to the signing and they were so excited, like shaking, crying at the fact they were actually meeting new kids on the block. Was that the video that we got of the girls? It was like a video from Twitter that somebody posted. It was like a couple stories back, but like they didn't have... I think, I maybe. Know, maybe we'll have to look but we'll I'll have, have to go to, back and I'll look. have to go back and look i felt the emotion right with them and i just met them that day i was right in front of them during the signing so i had my own autographs to get so i wasn't entirely paying attention but they were crying and donnie ended up hugging them and joe held one of their hands it was adorable right afterwards i'm pretty sure the one had announced her first words to joe as I think I just peed my pants. Oh, <laughs> nothing beats the first time you meet the guys. And right after they were still shaking and excited, it was like all their dreams came true. Oh, so that's all I got. It was a cold experience and some girls had been there overnight. I think they got there at midnight. Another blockhead went down the line with a Dunkin' to go coffee box and offered hot coffee to all of us, which was so awesome. That's awesome. That is awesome. It's all about the people you meet. It's great to see the guys, but the people you meet along the way are what it's really all about. That now. is the truth. My sister and I have met some of our best friends at New Kids events, and we reconnect whenever we can. The cruise is our annual friends vacay. It's like our reunion, and the guys are an added bonus to that. Mm -hmm. They are mostly West Coast, so anything in New York City is just us going solo. My sister and I have something that nobody but other blockheads understand, and that's what it's all about. The whole experience. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Thanks, Erica. Erica. We appreciate that. Yes. Thanks for taking the time and typing it all up. Yes. Thank you. It sounded like... A whirlwind. It did. Of a cold And she they flew weekend. in for it. Gosh. Well, Burr. we flew in for the Apollo show. Yes, we did. Oh, hells yes, we did. I think about that sometimes. That was a whirlwind. And I, but I think about, like, how lucky are we? 
We were so lucky. Like, how lucky are we that we, and we got were to like go to right that. there? We were like right there. Like, mm. like that was such an incredible moment in New Kids history. Yes, it was. And we were there for it. Thank like, you, Jackie. Huge. Thank you so much, Jackie. That, like, I think about that every once in a while. I just remember crying because I couldn't get tickets and I filmed myself trying to get the tickets. Do you remember this? Yes. I filmed myself trying to get those tickets and I'm crying because I can't, didn't get them. In and Jack- I remember Jackie's response. <laughs> What's wrong with the ones I got? You're right. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Friggin' right, Jackie. We love you. Yes. Okay. I am going to read a story that's very near and dear to my heart because I love this person. I know her and her name is Lori and this is Lori's block party story. Hey, Nikki and Brooke. It's Lori Latham. Pronounce Latham because almost everyone gets it wrong the first time. I think I called her Latham the first yeah, time. Yeah, probably. Um, if you didn't already know, Lori sent us gorgeous freaking posters. Uh, yeah that was a while ago so there might be some listeners that don't realize that okay these posters let me tell you it's like it's like a dream come true it's like they're right there oh they're beautiful it's like jordan and they're like on this material that like oh my gosh vinyl or something yes or like uh i don't know but it's nice oh beautiful but it's like Jordan is there. Like you can actually like touch him. Yes. And he's and like my size. We're well, not, currently building in my new office. So they're not in this office right now, but they will have they a were. beautiful. They were here for a long time <laughs> or on the door. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, we looked at them every time we recorded, oh um, but they will be awesome. in a prime real estate spot in the new office. And I cannot wait. I want to take it out right now. I can't wait. Put it up. I might do it. Eh. I might just put him back up because eh. why not? I mean, it's not like we won't be here to enjoy it. Exactly. For a little bit longer before you right. can move in. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just a small town Canadian girl. I was born and raised and have pretty much lived my entire life in the same 50 mile radius about an hour outside of Ottawa, Ontario. I love listening to MSCW. The episodes about the 80s and 90s bring back so many memories from my childhood, and I love all the block party episodes and hearing about my fellow New Kids fans and their most excellent adventures. After being a listener for a very long time, I'm finally getting to write down my BH story, or at least part of it. This is, quote, unquote, the beginning, so to say. How I came to be on this amazing ride the last few years, thanks to one concert. hey do you want to do you want to read the sections? I'll read the beginning. Oh, do you, do you want to read the beginning? Oh, yeah. Let's go back and forth. Okay, let's do that. Okay, cool. That's what I thought you meant it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's do, do that. That'll that. okay. be fun. The beginning. The beginning. My first introduction to new kids came in September of 1989. It was my first year of high school and I was 14. We didn't have cable or satellite in our home then. And my parents were always into country music and old rock and roll. So I didn't have any idea about current popular music until I was invited to a slumber party at a friend's house. Ooh. Her name was Kim, and she was a year older than I was. That right there is like a recipe for new music introduction. Yes, it is. She and the three other friends at the sleepover were already fans of new kids. When they started playing music and asking me who my favorite new kid was, I had no idea what they meant. <laughs> at first, they were a little again aghast. That I was so clueless, but they quickly recovered and informed me that I could be the Joey girl because I was the youngest and the last to join the group, of course. That's adorable. Mind you, when they pulled out that first bot magazine and showed me a picture of a smiling blue eyed boy who was possibly the cutest thing I'd ever seen in my life, I was not upset at the idea of being a Joey girl. Oh, hell no. That night, they started my new kids education, along with all the other current pop they liked. Tiffany, Debbie Gibson, Madonna, and so on. We played the new kids on the block and hanging tough albums over and over until her parents threatened us off to bed. (laughs) From that night, I was hooked. Our little group constantly listened to new kids, poured over every new issue of Tiger Beat, Bop, and every other teen magazine that dared to print a picture of a new kid. Our rooms were papered with pull-out posters. We watched videos, danced along until we knew every step of choreography, and we dreamed of seeing them in concert and meeting them. And of course... Them falling in love with us and living happily ever after. But of course. 
And then the announcement came that the Magic Summer Tour would be happening. And OMG, it was coming to Ottawa. (gasps) I begged and begged and begged my parents to let me go. I told them that if I could go, I didn't want anything else for Christmas or my next birthday. Not even socks and undies. Just one concert ticket. The answer was a resounding no. (sighs) Even after tears and tantrums and pouting for days, the answer was still no. I was crushed. I'm crushed. I know. I'm crushed for you 30 years ago. Kim and her cousin did get tickets to the concert, and I was so excited for them, but also so sad because I wouldn't get to go see Joey sing live. I wouldn't get to go with my friends. Life was so unfair. I may have been a little dramatic back then. No, you're not dramatic. We all, but you know what? We all would have. I did the same same thing. I did the same thing because my parents wouldn't let me go either. They were like, I'm not driving to Portland. (laughs) <laughs> i do remember that under the tree that christmas i got a joey shirt and a copy of the new kids christmas album which i am sure my parents regretted after the first hour of constant playing but i was selfishly a little disappointed when the ticket i wanted wasn't in one of my presents <sighs> that year moving on through 1990 the step-by-step album was released and of course we had to buy it and listen to it to learn all the lyrics and once the videos hit mtv we were always watching for it in the hopes of recording them August came and my friends went to the Magic Summer Tour show in Ottawa. They were a million miles from the stage, but they had the time of their lives. And of course, we talked for hours and hours afterwards so they could tell us every minute detail. Mm. I had saved up my allowance money to send with them for a Magic Summer Tour concert shirt, which they did buy and bring home for me. And I wore it until it was practically falling apart. I love that so much. That's really sweet. We watched the pay-per-view of the Magic Summer Tour concert in December of 1990 together, and Kim's father recorded it and made a copy of that show for each of us. I legit wore that tape out. Our group stuck together all through high school and stayed loyal to our guys. But since being a New Kids fan was not cool in our school, we didn't really advertise it too much to the general public. But there was more than one argument with other friends and non-friends over our love of the group and defending them against allegations of lip syncing and any other scandal that came up. I remember doing that. Yep. Yep. New Kids never played Ottawa again back in the day that I recall. And by the time they released Face the Music in 1994, all of the other girls had either graduated high school or moved to other schools. I was in my last semester of high school when I walked uptown on my lunch break to buy the new CD. I picked it out of the rack and paid, and then as I hit play on my discman for the walk back to school, I was shocked at the sound of the music. It was so different than any everything I was used to from New Kids. Yeah, it was. It wasn't bad, just different. And then track 13, I'll Still Be Loving You, there was Joe and that voice. Yep. I was definitely still a Joe girl. (laughs) Then the end came. I remember watching some entertainment show one evening and crying as they confirmed it was true. <sighs> NKOTB was disbanding. Mm. The craze was over. As we all did, I moved on, got over it. Posters and pictures of my friends and I, cassettes and videotapes and trinkets and old worn out tour shirts got packed away. And while I never forgot them and the music was always in my playlist, new kids faded a little for me and other music became my favorites. I skipped the boy band wars of the 2000s, BSB, In Sync, 98 Degrees, and so on. I felt that at 20, I was too old for boy bands. And to be truthful, I think my poor little fangirl heart was too broken at the end of NKOTB. Sadly, a few years later, when I went off to college and moved out of my parents' home, that box got tossed out and all my treasures were gone. (gasps) No! Can't lie. I cried over the loss of my memories as hard as I did over the new kids. As hard as I did over the news, new kids had broken up. No, that makes me so sad for you. Sorry, no, I'm so sorry. That's rough. Um, but we were into in sync. We were in our twenties, and we were like in sync, in sync. Yeah, <laughs> I am almost forty, and I'm like in sync, in sync. <laughs> oh, we're almost forty. Oh, I know. Okay, and then it began again. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Fast forward to fall 2012. I'm having coffee with my friend Tara, and she mentions that NKOTB is coming to Ottawa in June 2013 for the package tour, and she needs someone to go with. Um, pick me. 
I immediately said I would absolutely go. Finally, finally, I was going to see them live. I knew they reunited in 2008 and had been touring, even stopping a few times in Ottawa. But at that point, I hadn't had a chance to see them due to life things happening. Tara looked after getting the tickets when they went on sale for the two of us and her friend Leanne, who would be visiting from Newfoundland on the date of the concert. We were, we were all so excited. We had all been fans when we were younger, but only Tara had seen them before this tour. The day of the concert finally arrived, June 4th, 2013, and then disaster. It was announced that the tour caravan was stopped at the border into Canada and they weren't going to make it to Ottawa on time. <gasps> the concert was postponed to the next night. Oh. The disaster part was that Leanne was leaving on an early morning flight the next day headed home and because of her work responsibilities, she couldn't delay leaving. She had to miss the concert. That is awful. That's so sad. How awful. Like, this is her chance to finally see them. I'm going to keep reading. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) my heart stopped. I will admit that Tara and I were both upset. My attitude heading to the show the next night was a little grumpy, maybe more than a little, because our friend wasn't with us. We arrived at the venue and found our seats, almost right in the center of the arena, first level off the floor, about seven rows up. We got chatting with the ladies behind us, all of us excited to see the show. Boys to Men opened the show and threw a rose. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> And we're a doo doo, and we're really amazing. We sang along with every song in their set. I wasn't overly familiar with 98 Degrees, so I will admit that we just sat there and chatted during their set. Sorry, 98 Degrees. <laughs> I was like, ooh, Nick Lachey. Ooh. Nick Lachey. He is. If you're telling me you want me, hold me close all through the night. And I know. I die thinking about 98 degrees and you listening to it on repeat <laughs> it's the hardest thing oh my gosh to do. that was the hardest thing <laughs> to look you in the eyes and tell you i don't love you sorry we'll get back to the story now tangent then it was time the lights went down And Donnie's voice rolled over the arena, asking us to watch the video screens and to pledge to spend the next two hours having the time of our lives. Then the spotlights came up and there they stood in those awesome white jackets. OMG, it was happening. They opened with We Own Tonight, a song I wasn't familiar with at the time. But as I listened to the words, I could feel happiness filling me. Even now, I am almost always moved to tears when I hear that song, especially in concert. That is like a powerful song. I love that song. I love it so much. Yes. The music continued. The party amazing on every level. And then about four songs in, they did You Got It, The Right Stuff. And I felt 15 again. We sang. We danced. We marveled at the streamers and the confetti and the balloons raining down on us. And then came Joe Solo. Please don't go, girl. It was so perfect. I cried. Oh, there I was. Hey, I get it. I get it. Company. I get it. I get it. I did this in 2008. I get it. I get it. (laughs) And him in that gold lame. Oh, yeah. I was like, hey, he's right here. Joe. You can hear me in the video. That's great. (laughs) And, And BTW. I'm just going to let you all know that when we post video of this tour, you're going to hear me and my cat screams. Yes. And you're you gonna... will. <laughs> you will hear Nikki and her cat and screams. And you'll hear me singing over the whole thing. Yep. And you'll hear me like, Joe! <laughs> It'll sound similar to that. Yes. So. Joe! <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know ahead of time because you're, you've been warned. Okay. (laughs) There I was, a grown woman crying in the middle of an arena at a new kids concert while my favorite boy bander sings the song that started it all. The show went on, so many memories coming flooding back as they sang more songs for my youth. And then it was time for them to sing tonight. 
I remember they left the stage and being new to their shows, I had no idea where they had gone. We looked around the arena and saw Donnie in the crowd way down at the far end of the arena. And then, OMFG, Joey is right freaking there. Oh my gosh, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> um, oh, I was literally closer than I'd ever thought I would be to Joe McIntyre. He was standing seven rows away from us at the bottom of the stairs, singing tonight to our section. I remember Tara grabbing my hand and yanking me out of our row. She ran down the stairs, caught the one and only picture we took that night. It's of Joe. Of co- it's, of the, it's of Joe, of course. But it's so not a very good picture. Cell phone cameras weren't the best in 2013. And then there was me. I just stood there, frozen, and staring at Joe. Standing, staring at Joe, and standing seven rows away from me until he headed back to the main stage. Smooth, Lori. So smooth. You missed your chance to touch Joe McIntyre. I'm such a dork. (laughs) LOL. There were a couple more songs after that, and then they closed the show with Hangin' Tough. Huge amounts of confetti, and the noise from the audience was like nothing I'd ever heard. As the lights came up in the arena, it seemed silent after the amazing noise of the last two hours, and I was exhausted. I had absolutely no voice left. My feet hurt from dancing, but I was so very, very happy. I cannot wait for this. I cannot wait. This is making me so excited to go to the tour. Is it like, I just can't wait. Like, I seriously, I'm getting emotional because I cannot freaking wait. wait. Like, I can't wait. I can't. I'm really excited. Okay. I'm going to not cry. Okay. <laughs> um, that night started me on the most amazing journey. I joined the Block Nation fan club and then Twitter. I followed the guys, got followed back by a couple of them, and started meeting fellow fans online who have become some of my most cherished friends. This is great. That, sex, that part gave me life. I know. Because I got thinking about, like, the shows of the years past. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited for this one. Because now we'll have memories from this show. I know. and (sighs) But I know there's going to be some songs that I'm going to miss. Like, which ones are you going to miss? The Whisper. Yes, I know. Like, that's the one. The Whisper. I just love it so much. The Whisper. It's such a good song. Anyway. All right. I'm going to continue. Okay. Wait, there's an NKOTB cruise. Hold the phone. Stop the presses. When did you find out there was an NKOTB cruise? When do you think? I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, Rock This Boat is the obvious choice, but I feel like I knew before that. I feel like maybe I did too. I feel like I had to have because I belonged to the fan club. Like forever. And we had gone to shows previously. Right. Like Like it's not like we were not. Well, we've been going to shows. We had been going to shows since two thousand eight, right? And I thought we were like like, we had no like we had been in it. I thought I was up on my game before Rock This Boat, right? But I don't think I don't know. Like I don't know. I honestly can't. I I can't tell you. It was just probably so far out of our wheelhouse, you know, like that. Like, like I would never wasn't even an option. This is how I felt about bar stools. Same, same, same. Like, I remember at that show. That show. In 2013. Right. When we met that girl and she said her and her husband. Yes. Had bar stools. Yes. And I remember thinking, I'll never be able to do that. Because she was like, oh, it was like a thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, I I remember thinking. I'll never and I was like, wait a second. You get to go hang out with them. But like, I'll never be able to do that. It was crazy. That was my thinking. Like, I'll never, ever be able to do that. That's just like. That was completely out of like my realm. Yeah. Of what was possible. Right. Come to find out. I want to hear what that bar stool experience was like back then. Like, so if you guys have had bar stools like way back, I want to hear how different. If it's like what like what if it's changed? the same thing or if it's changed. Right. That would be really interesting, actually. Yeah. Cause I'm excited to see how much the meet and greet has changed for like a five star. Um, because yep. I'll see that because we did that in 2013, right? And I'll see that in Hershey. Well, I'm not really sure because like the one that I got is like bar, like co- like it's like the highest one you could get. They don't have bar stools in Hershey. They don't have bar stools at Hershey. No. Oh, is it just a setup of the stage? It must be. It's weird. It must be like 
it's weird because there's a like it's like a pit almost, but it's seats. Oh. And the thing is, like, what I'm nervous about is that they're gonna perform on the outer stage. So like I'll they'll have their backs to me the entire time. That's what I'm nervous about. Oh. But I mean, whatever. I've gotten to see them already before. Right. Well, somebody told me. I can't remember who it was, but when I was I was so excited about Hershey and they were like, oh, I got like really good seats at Hershey. And the entire time they were like out like they, oh. she thought like they were really good seats, but they weren't. Oh, weird. Yeah. So it's just the way it's set up there. Yeah. It's set huh. up very differently. It's different. But I'll have another show. Well, right. So this is one. Of, yeah, yeah, Right. I mean, right. You, you'll have a good I'll time. Have no an, what. I will have a good time no matter what. And Bryn will be with me and. Right. It's going to be fun. Okay. Okay. I'm going to continue on. Here we go. Then, in the fall of 2013, I learned about the New Kids on the Block cruise. Excuse me? <laughs> NKOTB cruise, like, on a boat with the guys for four nights? For real? My little crew of Blockhead friends started talking about going on the next NKOTB cruise, and after extensive YouTube research, I was totally sold. So when my Twitter friend Leslie asked me if I wanted to be roomies on the 2014 cruise, the answer was, again, resoundingly, yes. Yes. We got ourselves booked, and then the countdown started. June 2014 could not arrive soon enough. I remember my family and friends here at home thinking I was crazy to jet off to New York City to meet people I only knew from the internet and get on a boat for four nights to party with them, and maybe I was. But those internet people turned out to be amazing, and they have become some of the best friends in my life. Same, same. Some of these people we've met will be our forever friends. Lifelong like, friends. Like, no joke. Like, like, lifelong for friends. For like, real. forever. Leslie and I and several of our other friends met at the airport in New York for the first time on the Tuesday before the cruise and spent 24 hours exploring the city, a whirlwind tour of some of the highlights of New York City. The night before the cruise, Leslie and I headed off to a hip hop show while the rest of our friends headed to a Broadway show. At that show, we spotted another friend we knew from Twitter, but hadn't met in person yet. The two of us yelled, Taffy! Really loudly across the room, and the standard excited, Oh my god, it's you! Fangirl squeals ensued, and we also met her husband JC and cousin Paige. As we chatted, we realized that our cabins were actually in the same hallway, not far from each other. What are the odds? That was the beginning of what we now jokingly, jokingly call the Fab Five. We hung out through the entire cruise at all deck parties, ate dinner together every night, and at the very end of GPS night, we took a photo of the five of us together sitting on the stage in the aftermath of the party. This photo has become an, an annual tradition for us now. That's, That's so awesome. cute. We ended up staying at the venue where the show was held very, very late, just chatting, having drinks, and getting to know each other. The next morning, Leslie and I jumped into a cab and headed to the cruise terminal to experience our first NKOTB cruise and head for the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> I was fairly certain we were going to die in the crazy traffic, but we arrived safely. I am sure we were all wide-eyed and obviously newbies as we made our way through the throng to drop off our luggage and make our way to check in. And if we didn't look it, I completely gave us away by forgetting my carry-on bag curbside and having to run the wrong way back down the escalator and nearly getting hit by a giant delivery truck in my race to get it. I got yelled at by the driver and provided a laugh to everyone checking their luggage, but I survived to tell the tale. Aww. This seemed to be a theme for this particular trip, and I am admittedly a huge klutz. The day before, I had managed to fall down a flight of stairs at our hotel. <gasps> what? Oh, no. Gosh. And then while we were in Bermuda, I was nearly hit by a very fast-moving taxi. I should possibly invest in bubble wrap. Oh, my goodness. We finally made it on board safely. And I remember standing on Lido deck with Leslie and taking in the sight and sound of the crowd when this guy walks by us. We both did a double take and looked at each other. And I said, holy shit, that was John Knight three feet away from us. And Leslie hadn't recognized. Oh, like Leslie hadn't recognized him <laughs> again. Good job, Lori. You're a major dork. LOL. You're the, you're great. <laughs> you are great. Eventually, we found our cabin and dumped our carry-on bags, headed for Mustard Drill, and then changed for the sail-away party, meeting up with friends as we made our way back onto the Lido deck. Let me tell you that no matter how ready, how prepped, how prepared you think you are, when you hear Donnie read through the oaf for the first time, and then the guys come out in that stage, you just aren't ready. What a feeling. 
keep in mind that this cruise was supposed to be a we're just going once to see what the cruise is like. <laughs> Before we even made it back to our cabin after sail away was over, we had agreed we were coming back the next year. And clearly, five cruises later, we were only fooling ourselves. Okay. So I just have to say. <laughs> yes. The beginning of the cruise, I said to you. Yeah. So we're going to do this again. And you were like, eh, I don't know. Like, it all depends. So I was like, I need to find a, a roommate. Like, I'm Def, I'm. I was already sold. Sold. <laughs> I was like already. Signed, sealed, delivered. I was already planning the next cruise. Right. And then the last night, you were like, "Oh hell no, I'm going. Like this is going. I'm like, doing this again. Sign, sealed, delivered. We're going. Doesn't matter. We're going. Right. Right. So because I for I have a forever cruise for me now. I mean, we are always was, going. It was perfect. It really was. It was absolutely perfect. Yeah. So. I liked it very much. <laughs> um, But I just remember you like, oh, I don't know. And Christine was like, so what's Frick thinking? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if she's going to want to go on the cruise again. I hadn't decided that I wanted to. Like, I don't know, second day, third day. You had decided? I had. Like, it was in my mind. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. I just, I kind of like because I like, can remember you were like talking it, to Maria. It was like my little secret. You were talking to, but you need to share these things with me because you were talking to somebody, and I just remember going, "What? What did you just? What did you say?" Yes, that was that was like the that was like on no sleep la- the yeah. last night. It I like it. sat up in bed. I feel yes. like I was like, "What? Yeah, you did. What? 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 You were so what? happy." What? <laughs> You were so happy. I was. So, yeah, but I had like kind of, dis- but I kept it to myself. Not consciously. But just. But like, I just, I like, I had been thinking about it as yeah. as we think about things, you know? That's true. That's true. Um. So anyway, I can't wait for the next one. Me too. Um, all right. I think the fact that we managed to be within a few feet of most of the guys during that sail away party was a factor as well. There are so many memories from that first cruise, I couldn't possibly write them all out. But here are a few true highlights. I'm going to pass this over to you. I'm getting the torch. I'm passing it. I got it in my hand. (laughs) It's lit. It is lit. Night one was masquerade night. We all got dolled up in fancy dresses and our masks and headed headed to the Lido deck. We ended up near a back corner of the deck behind one of the small B stages. Joe was up on the B stage, pulling up ladies and dancing with them while our group while our group were all just dancing together and having a good time. Then suddenly the crowd seemed to just part, and there was Joe coming into the middle of us. He slid between Paige and I as we all danced together for what felt like several moments before heading on through the crowd. Once he left, we were all like, did that really just happen? That's insane. That's insane. That's crazy. I love it. That makes me happy. I love it. It's magical. Yes. Night two was cowboy night. I know that this theme was not a popular one for a lot of people, but being that I am a total country kid, I was totally on board for it from the start. I mean, come on. Joey McIntyre in a cowboy hat? Yes, please. Add on top of that, the infamous strip down and his jump into the pool he did. Holy smokes. After his dip in the pool... Joe walked through the crowd, heading to get dressed. He wasn't stopping to take pictures. So as a security guy went by us to move back, I turned to get out of the way. I was suddenly shocked at the feeling of something cool and wet against my arm. I turned my head and quickly was face to face with Joe. Yep, that cool and wet something was him. (laughs) Oh my gosh. (laughs) Joe McIntyre, wet from the pool, in his underpants, was touching me. I have no doubt I probably gasped or squeaked or made some other sound of shock as he grinned at me and kept going. Good thing Leslie was there with me to hold me up because I may have just died a little or a lot in that moment. (laughs) On GPS night, I had a friend come and get me and tell me I had to head up to deck 10 because Joe was sitting and taking photos with fans. We hurried up and got into line. And when my turn came, I handed my phone to the security guy. Oh, those times before selfies were a thing. In the end, the photo he took was awful. My eyes are huge and I look more than just a little crazy. (laughs) Thank goodness my friends still in line were taking photos too. So I have one that I'm not afraid to post. (laughs) 
LOL. My only regret from that first concert and first cruise was that I didn't have a camera to take photos with. So the pictures I have from the first year aren't great, but the memories attached to what I do have are precious nonetheless. I have since invested in a concert camera that comes with me to every event. And as most who know me are aware, I am a click happy fool and I am so so psyched. happy. I'm so happy for that. Very. In the years since that first concert, I've had many new kids related adventures, concerts, meet and greets and cruises. Each could be its own story. And I will gladly send them in if you want to hear them. Yes, we do. Keep on. Please. On. I love these stories. Yes. But to keep the story from being three hours long, I'll just summarize for today. 2014, my first NKOTB cruise, June 5th through 9th, was supposed to be a once in a lifetime trip. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> New Kids After Dark in Vegas, July 10th through 13th. Um, So sad we missed this. So sad we missed this. Um, Nick and Night Show on October 3rd. So sad we missed that. So sad. I so that. sad we missed oh that. Oh my god! I must have been under a rock. That was the year you had Sadie. Um, no, I had her in 2012. Oh, what am I thinking? But it was like a weird time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 2015 main event tour Atlanta June 6th and Montreal June 30th did a top shelf for this one hot dang. <laughs> What's a top shelf? Eh. Did a top shelf for this one. Is that like one of the... Um, Is that like a bar stool? Yeah. Like, do they have a different like verbiage for something Yeah, like that? I want to know. My second NKOTB cruise, October 8th to the 12th. 2016, Danny Solowood shows, Boston, Buffalo, and Toronto. Whoa. That's awesome. Mixtape Festival, August 6th. I am so mad I missed that. And my third NKOTB cruise, October 9th, 19th through the 23rd. 2017. This has been dubbed the summer of shenanigans. I did a lot of traveling this year. I went to 10 shows on the total package tour. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Cincinnati, Nashville, Phoenix, Anaheim, Toronto, night one and two, Fenway, Atlanta, Tampa, and Hollywood, Florida. We even took a side trip to Vegas in June to see a couple shows of the BSB residency and my fourth NKOTB cruise. That's amazing. That's amazing. That really is. Um, okay. Uh, 2018, a quiet year. I headed to LA to see Joe's Hollywood Night Show on April 18th and then cruise 10 or cruise X. At the center of every single one of these adventures has been the amazing friends I get to enjoy them with. Of course, we all go to shows and on the cruise because they are new kids events. But without the people we go and have these experiences with, it wouldn't nearly be as much fun. I am very fond of saying that in 2013, I came for the band, but then I met the most amazing people. So I stayed. True. That just got me. That it's just true. got me. Why? I'm emotional tonight. That just got me, though, because it's so true. Well, it is. absolutely. It in is. 2017, I came for the band, but then I met the most amazing people. That's what I'm saying for us, for me in 2017. Yeah. Well, we've been coming for the band all along. Right. But we met the most amazing people in 2017. In 2017. We met Michelle and Amy. Yep. And then it just snowballed. It snowballed. Here's a link to some photos. Let me know if you have any trouble accessing them and feel free to post if you wish. Um, yeah, we we are definitely posting these photos because they yes. are freaking amazing. And you guys need to come to the website, my so called whatever.com, and click on this episode, which is ep episode 128, and come and check this out because there are so many photos and you will love them. Thank you so much for the My So Called Whatever podcast and the community you have built from it. It's great to have a place to share stories and enjoy our love for all things 80s, 90s, and boy band related. Keep on being amazing people. Your friend, Lori. Oh, Lori, I love thank her. You for being I love you, Lori. And I got to meet Lori for just a brief, I got to finally meet her on the cruise, but it was just, I wanted to spend time with her. Like, cause she's, we, we had been talking, you know, the, for a long time. And so next time we are able to meet up. We are going to spend some time together. We're going to have some. Have a drink. Maybe have some Dr. McGillicuddy's. I don't know. You, you never know what might happen. Right. Maybe have a uh, angry orchard fireball. 
<laughs> I really like this picture. That's a great picture of Jordan. I just really like it because he's like, I don't know. Just he just looks. I don't. He just looks fine. You look fine. You look nice. You look nice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna look up our text messages because. And thank you so much, Lori. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lori. you. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Erica. Erica. And thank you, Becky. And thank you, Becky, for your stories. And if you guys want to share one of your stories, you can send it on over to my so called whatever at gmail.com. Once again, my so called whatever at gmail.com. But don't leave because we have some amazing text messages that we are going to read for you right now. Yes. Okay. So here's the first one. Okay. Love MSCW. So hashtag thankful for, for your podcast. Thinking we should do a paper cutout of NKOTB people can post pictures with when traveling. Reference episode 112. Listening to it now. Hashtag twug. Thank you. Thanks. That's a great idea. Like we, we've been starting, we tried to do the doll thing, but we just, honestly, guys, like we couldn't figure out the logistics of it. Yeah. So we'll probably take the dolls on tour with us. And for sure, I think I'm going to hand them out when in Boston so we can at least get some out there. Some out there. Yeah. So, yeah. Love it. Thanks. Oh, we've got more. We have a lot. So here's another one we received. Hey, we don't have a name. No, that's okay. That's okay. We love it. It says, I love it when you two sing with like the laughing, like crying eyes emoji. (laughs) I sing along with you. By the way, it's your burdens. Burgers. I will bear are the best. (laughs) R.I.P. (laughs) MJ. I think we've already read that one. We did? I think so. But that's okay. It's been a long time. So it has been a long time. So I still will always hear your burgers are the best. Your burgers are the best. (laughs) All right. Here's another one. It's Chrissy Salvador listening now. Gotta love Google for this text feature. Hope you both are well. And just so you guys know, you can text us at 857-271-1047. Like you can text us. You don't have to call in if you don't want to, but you can text and we'll read them. So that's what we're doing now. All right. Here's the next one. Hi, Brooke and Nikki. I'm listening to episode 112 on this snowy Wisconsin day. Love reliving all of these great cruise moments. Bye, Christina. (laughs) Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Christina. This one is, hi, gals. It's Angela from Fort Lauderdale. Instagram. I think we've read this one. Um, M-A-D-R-E-D-E Bryce. Mad Red Bryce? Or Madre de Bryce. Madre de Bryce, yes. Or Madre de Bryce. Oh, <laughs> I'm listening on the way to Orlando for the weekend. Yeah. I hope you had fun in hope Orlando fun. back in February. Right. <laughs> um. All right. So, oh, hi, my name is Kelly and I'm a Virgo. I think I know who that's from. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> all right. Hey, this is Amber, Candace's cousin from Step 112. Love the podcast. Love the episode. You ladies rock my face off. Amazing that we were on the same episode as Kelly because we were the two who finished filling that photo group. That's right. They filled Kelly's photo group. Oh, yeah. Thanks for sending that in. Yeah. You rock our face off. Yeah, you do. So we have another one. This is from Joy. Yay. Oh, wait. We've already read this one. I think we read this. Yeah. So it was Joy's most embarrassing moment. We already read that one. So I'm going to move on to the next. All right. Hey, girls, it's Courtney catching up on the podcast today. Love you both and so excited for Boston. Us too, Courtney. Yes, I can't wait. Ah. In case you haven't figured it out from this episode. Yes. We're very excited. We are very excited. Boston's our first show and it's our bar stool. So our very first show is like doing it up. We, go We're big. living it up. Yep, we are. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay. Brooke and Nikki, it's Duan. I love you guys. Like you're totally tubular, you know. Confession, I have boys in the band on at work on a repeat loop. Shh, LOL. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, ladies, just listen to step 116 and just want to say I'll never get tired of the podcast. I love you. Or actually, it says I hurt you. I just wish I lived closer and could meet some of you Northeast ladies at your get togethers. Christy. Oh, thanks, Christy. 
I wish you could too. I know. Maybe someday. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe you never someday know. we'll do something, a meetup somewhere else. Right. You just never know. Well, there'll be a new kids event somewhere closer to you. Yeah. And we'll be there. Okay. I love you guys. My name is Margaret and I am from West Virginia. I love the new kids on the block. They are my happy place. When I listen to your podcast, I relive my childhood. So thank you. You're welcome, Margaret. You're welcome. Thank you for texting us. All right. Next one. Hey, it's Katie. I love finding myself in others' pictures. (laughs) Me too. Me too. That is fun. Hey, this is Christina F. I've been listening since Donnie shared your podcast. I feel accomplished today because I'm finally caught up other than this week's episode. I love you girls and the stories. I always find myself agreeing and talking to my phone. I haven't written my story yet, but will one day. I haven't met the guys, but have 30 years of love. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh, Christina, we hope you meet them soon. Yeah, for real. All right. The next one is actually two. She sent one in March and one in April. Okay. Hello from Wisconsin. I've been wanting to text you. Oh, to text that since you mentioned it in the podcast. Thanks for the lucky song drop on the recent episode. I totally forgot about it. I was belting it out along with you like it was the year 2000. (laughs) And I was driving my black Dodge Neon home from college. Have a great weekend, ladies. Leanne. And then she wrote about a month later. You did it. Congrats on the Joey Fatone interview. Bucket list, I'm sure, for you two NSYNC fans. I'm so proud of both of you. Hard work equals results. Leanne. She did a little flex the li- emoji. Yeah. Thanks, Leanne. Oh, Thank you so You're much. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay. Here is another one. I have eight messages left and I will be caught up. Uh, so she must mean episodes. <laughs> that's okay i have been loving this podcast thank you so much i've been thinking a lot about local djs one of my favorites actually came to career day at my middle school that's so cool that is so cool that is so cool so she must have been when we were talking about going and visiting the djs yeah (laughs) (laughs) eight episodes left not eight messages it's already getting to be the reason we call this place hot lanta (laughs) This is Karen. I'm on Facebook. Gr- I'm on. I'm on the Facebook group page whenever I'm home. Oh, cool. Karen! Thanks. Thank you. So those are our text messages. I'm so glad that you guys have sent them to us and keep sending them. Yay! We really appreciate them. Yeah, we do. Thank you. Yeah. So and so we've got a message or two that we're gonna play after this. So listen to them. Stick around. Yeah. Listen stick to those around. messages and then call us up and leave us your own. Yep. That's 857-271-1047. Once again, 857-271-1047. And don't forget to send your stories to my so-called whatever at gmail.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We love you. We love you. And we will see you next time. Yes, we will. Okay. Okay. Bye. bye. Hello. No one is available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Hello, hello, hello. This is Charlene calling from Long Beach, California. Um, I just wanted to let people know, in case they're listening to the podcast and they haven't jumped into the Facebook group, my so-called whatever on Facebook group, uh, that they don't know people at the Mixtape Tour are very generously doing lives for us from their seats. It's pretty great. So if you're not in the Facebook group already, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting in. See some lives. Whether you're going to a show, whether you're not going to a show, whether they're not even coming to your city, why not get on in the action? It's fun. And then, you know, we try to post, like, other stuff, too, like 80s and 90s and all that good stuff. So anyone not in the group, this is your cordial invitation. Join the group, my so-called whatever, on Facebook groups. Anyway. See you guys later. If I think of anything else, I'll call you back. Bye. Hey, Brooke and Nikki. It's Jackie, a.k.a. Brown Sugar Honey. Um, Just a thought. Uh, The other day I was walking home and listening to um, the Mixtape Tour playlist that um, Nikki created on Spotify. And um, I got to If You Go Away, and I don't know why. I mean, I've heard the song a million times, but, like, a flood of memories just came back to, like, a moment where, you know, it was like a school dance. We call them canteens. Um, And, you know, you have, like, the slow dance with, like, your your classmates. 
Um, and, you know, it was like a two-step slow dance. And I don't know. It just came flooding back. It wasn't – it was just a nice memory. I'm just wondering if other people have that experience sometimes, too. You know, well, songs often do that, but – um, it doesn't always happen whenever I listen to that song, but for that particular day, that moment, maybe it was the weather and the sun being out and just my mind being clear. But, um, yeah, that's probably one of the reasons why I love that song so much. It just brings back, brings me back to a time that was just wondrous and fun and exciting and heartbreaking, etc. Anyway, see you guys on the mixtape tour. Bye. End of messages. File's done.